Join us as career changers, company leaders, industry experts, and others who have been in your shoes share their stories, insights, and lessons learned to help you find enjoyment through employment in the tech world. I'm Nemo Ashong, and this is the Employment Podcast. Hello, employees. I have a great, great story to share with you, and it's going to be coming up today through the story of Devon Lyman. And the reason that I'm so excited for you to get a chance to listen to this is because Devon's story is simply inspiring. You see, I know a lot of us feel that there are some monumental challenges that we have to overcome in order to make that transition in our career, in order to make the impact that we want to make in our lives and through the work that we do. And I'm excited because Devon is someone who has seen those challenges, overcome those challenges, and is actively taken on more so that he can continue to move forward. And employees, that's the kind of approach and spirit that I hope you will be willing to explore for yourself. I'll let Devon tell you more about it during the episode, but he's currently the lead data scientist at Forecast Inc. And the reason this is so cool, well, not the only reason, but one of the reasons I, I'm excited for you to listen to this here is because Devon hit a major roadblock along his journey where he was unable to get his diploma from the college he attended due to financial reasons. And over time, through a journey that he'll walk you through, he's gone from that to being the go-to person for data science at his organization. Now, I try and make it a point here not to just highlight how one person went from zero hero to hero overnight. That's not the kind of podcast that we have. Those aren't the kind of conversations that we have. So you're also going to get the benefit of hearing how he physically approached it, what his tactics were, what his mindset was, and what you can do to help you get similar, if not better results as you reach your roadblocks, as you go for the things that you really care about. And he has some big dreams that he's put in there. They're not that far away because you can tell just by the approach that he takes that, that the things that he wants are closer within reach than they may seem. Devon is someone who is truly in pursuit of enjoyment and is relentless in his journey to experience it and to experience it at higher and higher levels. I think you're going to really get something important from this conversation. And I have to apologize in advance. I messed up. There's some audio issues that took place here that unfortunately might impact your listening experience. I'm going to ask you here for a favor. And that favor is to do yourself the gift of listening past that and looking past that so that you can get the true value that is in this unique story here, such that it doesn't remain a unique story, so that you can also join the story and have the successes that he has in the enjoyment that he has through this approach. And I'll toss out there, if anyone's an audio engineer and wants to help me clean up this episode, I would gladly say thank you and welcome that so that employees in the future get a chance to listen to this with a cleaner version. Just going to put it out there. Send me an email at nemo at employment.com if this is of any interest to you, if you're looking for a cool, fun project. I'm also excited to introduce to you a cool, fun project that I've been working on, which are the employment workshops. So starting in November, we're going to be introducing workshops that are going to be taking place for you to get some pinpointed, targeted work on specific themes and challenges that keep coming up in the one-on-one coaching that I'm doing with employees. Now, these workshops are not going to be as comprehensive as the one-on-one coaching, and they're not going to be as tailored as the one-on-one coaching, but they are going to be incredibly applicable and customized to the people that attend. We're focusing up front on a few different core themes. One of them is figuring out your purpose, your passion, and what it means for you to find enjoyment in the work that you do. Another one is focused on translating the skills that you have right now and the skills that you're building in your current role or boot camps or whatever you're doing to develop yourself personally and professionally and helping a future employer or future manager understand how it's applicable to the role and problems that that team is looking to solve. So we'll help you leave that session with the confidence of knowing how to break down the work that you've done, regardless of the industry and team that you've been on in such a way that you get to the core transferable aspects. And I had mentioned that each workshop is customized to the individuals that attend. And what that looks like, it will takes on a lot of different ways. I like to play. It's enjoyment. Why not have some fun, right? Why not get great results while having a smile on our face? 
So I'm going to look to accelerate your results through these tangible, hands-on, experiential workshops. And a way that we might do this might be to play with having you bring your resume and a specific job application that you actually want. And then you can let me know in advance of the session if you'd like to be one of the people who are offered a chance to get some one-on-one coaching right then and there. And we'll focus on your past experiences and find out how you can start reframing them in a way that your employer will understand. So regardless of your industry that you were in and regardless of the industry and role that you're going to, we got your back and we're going to help make sure you get some clarity right then and there on that workshop. And even if you aren't selected or you don't raise your hand to be a part of that part of it, You'll get the opportunity to be a fly on the wall and see how we go about pulling out the important aspects and really leave there with a framework and some examples of how others have tuned into the aspects that are truly transferable and how they are able to articulate it in a way that others can get. I've gone on enough about this that I might as well add one more thing. We're about community here at Enjoyment. So you're gonna ch- gonna get a chance to meet others and directly have some small dis- group discussions and hear from others how they are applying it, get, in a ch- get a chance to practice it yourself and say it out loud with one another and also share some insights with the overall group. This is more than a webinar. This is more than a training and this is more than just a course. This is a, a space for you to experience what it's like to overcome the challenges that are currently holding you back. These are just two of the workshops that we're looking to do. And the way that I operate is that I provide solutions for the people who are actively asking for it. So if you come on this workshop and there's something there that is unclear to you or you find that you have your own challenge, well, guess what? That's what I'm going to be using as my basis to move forward and for the next workshop or workshop in the future. It's a beautiful thing. I want to help those that are ready to be helped. So if you're ready to commit to whatever is coming next for you, if you're ready to get past these roadblocks and that have been holding you back, and if you're ready to really step into what enjoyment can fully mean for you, then come on over. Go to enjoyment.com slash workshops and check out our schedule and sign up for an upcoming workshop or multiple workshops. We're all from as a complimentary workshop right now, but that's not going to last forever. So come on, get an opportunity to apply this for yourself and come be a part of this free session where you get a chance to meet other employees and address these challenges that have been holding you back. I'm excited for you and I'll see you at the next workshop. Until then, here's a great conversation with Devon Lyman. Enjoy. Hello, and welcome to the Enjoyment Podcast, where we're focused on helping people just like you experience enjoyment through employment. Today, we have Devon Lyman on the show. Devon, would you like to say hello to employees out there? Hello, all employees. (laughs) This is going to be fun, fun times here. So let me let you all know a little bit about Devon. Devon studied mathematics at Stevens Institute of Technology and works in data science and business analytics. He started as a data analyst at Fidelis Secure Care, Inc. in Detroit, Michigan. He is currently the lead data scientist at Forecast, Inc. in Hoboken, New Jersey. Devon, it is an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. We're really excited to dive into your story and learn how you experience enjoyment through employment. But before we do that, we'd like to just understand how you experience enjoyment in general. Would you let us know about your life, love, work, and passion? Sure. Um, the most important, uh, at least the thing I'm most passionate about in life, is logic games and application of logic games. Um, so, for instance... Um, I, I particularly enjoy solving problems, solving computational pro puzzles, solving social problems, solving um, strategic problems, and those largely manifest themselves in games and in sports. Uh, so I'm a huge follower of sports. I'm a big player of games in general, video games, board games, card games, any games, it doesn't particularly matter. Um, and I really enjoy applying logic to any and all walks in life. So what's your favorite game right now then? My favorite game of all time is chess. It's always been chess. I've played many board games. Go uh, Checkers is a horrible, horrible game, but it is a good game nonetheless. But chess will always be my go-to if I want a truly competitive and mentally charging experiment. All right. Well, I don't have chess here right now, but I will give you a mentally charging experience if you're interested in <laughs> in having some fun there. Um, so, uh, Devon, would you mind sharing with us a success quote that you've used to guide you throughout your professional journey? Sure. For me, what has always driven me through any problem I've had in life is the idea that every problem is solvable. You just have to that properly diagnose what the problem is. Uh, 
but every problem is solvable. If you find that a problem is unsolvable, then you're not looking hard enough for, for a real solution. Sometimes the solution may be one that you're not particularly happy with. It's not ideal. It may be a solution that gives you the gains that you would like to achieve later than you would like, but sometimes we have to make some sacrifices in order to achieve our end goals, but we can definitely get there if you if you take the right path. So that's great. Can we explore for you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it would be great to understand and see if you can give us a chance, time where you found a solution to a problem, you solved the problem, but that problem was not the, the solution was not the easy answer. Well, absolutely. I think this really goes down to the core of how I got into the line of work that I'm currently in, actually. It's a bit of a, of a circuitous journey. So in, uh, in the biography that I sent to you, uh, you'll notice the, the choice of words. Um, I chose to say that I attended Stevens Institute of Technology instead of the same that I graduated from Stevens Institute of Technology. And the reason why is because technically I did not graduate. Um, I've had a lot of financial difficulties that had stopped me along my way in college from actually getting a diploma despite taking all of the relevant coursework and acquiring all of the skills that I needed. I acquired actually all the skills that I that I needed in order to complete a master's in mathematics at Stevens Institute of Technology. But uh, because of financial difficulty, a lot of those classes were essentially negated. They, they, they didn't count. So um, I, I did not finish and I had to leave without actually getting a diploma. So the difficulty then is, well, how do you go from there to becoming a lead data scientist at, um, at, at, at the company that you currently work for? Well, the, the difficulty there is that um, I needed to figure out exactly what does an employer need for me in order for me to get the job. The end goal is for me to get a job. So uh, or more relevantly, to get a specific type of job. So if I don't have this, there's got to be a solution to this problem. I need to find ways to demonstrate value. So my first employer, Fidelis Secure Care Incorporated in Detroit, Michigan, when I applied to work with them and I was up front with them, I told them, I don't have proof that I know this stuff, but I can prove it to you if you give me a chance. So they gave me a test on everything that, that related to health insurance, health insurance premiums, statistics, business analysis, data analysis, et cetera. And I answered every single question correctly. I got 100% on, on, on test that they gave me. And that was enough of, assur of an assuredness to them that I knew what I was talking about. And then they were willing to give me a chance. And then I impressed at that, at that place of employment and eventually moved up the ranks. So then in the future, when I'm looking for other uh, job opportunities, other work opportunities, now I have that experience to harken back to. And that crutch of not being able to actually collect a degree is no longer weighing me down. Thanks for sharing this. this I, I also had uh, some financial difficulties with, uh, while in school. Um, and I, I look at it as one of the bigger turning points in my career, or my, my life, really. Um, when I was told your financial aid didn't come through, you're not going to be able to finish here. Luckily, I had a family member who, who was able to step up into that moment, but there's something on a personal level that feels like, wow, that is, that is incredibly difficult. And what's really amazing is how you've been able to, or how you went through and turned that into something real, like positive and such that it's no longer as defining, um, in, in your career experience there. Can we talk a little bit here, Devon, about, you said, you said some of my favorite words throughout this here, demonstrated value. Um, and I think a lot of employees out there would go through and they feel like they don't have the credentials to, to help them move forward or to, to actually get into their next role. And with your story, what comes to mind is like, it's less about the credentials and more about your ability to do it. You solve that problem. Can you talk a little bit here about that test and how you, how, how that test actually took place? And I think what's more important is how you either prepared for the, the, the test or what you did after they gave you the test to allow you to come back with a hundred percent. Like how, how did that happen for you? Sure. So when I was in college, I, one of my initial career goals was to become an actuary. So I studied to become an actuary. Uh, I passed the first couple of actuarial exams, but then ultimately decided that I no longer wanted to be an actuary, that that line of work wasn't for me. So now, after not getting a degree and needing a job, well, now these are some credentials that I have to, to, to say that I do know something about 
the field of insurance and I do know something about math. So when I so when I applied for Fidelis Secure Care now and I told them I didn't have a degree and they were skeptical and I told you I can prove that I know this stuff. They asked me to go there. So I had to travel to Michigan, which in and of itself was difficult because I had to find a way to pay for that. But I was able to borrow money from friends um, in order to do that. So I traveled to Michigan and I sat there and I took a test that they internally prepared, especially for this. They didn't have sort of a stock exam for anyone who applied. They just created it specifically for me. And it in, it was a test that, yeah, it, it, they told me that it would cover insurance, math, and statistics. Uh, they didn't really tell me any, any more or any less than that. So as far as preparing for it is concerned, uh, I mostly look, look back over statistics coursework that I've done. I look back over the materials that I used to prepare for the actuarial exam. I read up about health insurance, about how it's specifically implemented by different companies as far as Medicare, Medicaid, the core differences between the two, and how those premiums work as as it pertains to those being, as people being enrolled in Medicare or people using Medicaid and what that looks like from on a financial level for the country and also for smaller businesses that administrate those. Um, So yeah, I, I I learned, I learned about as much as I could and I didn't want to leave any stone unturned. Um, and I did that endlessly for about a week and a half, two weeks before I went over to Michigan to actually take the exam. So when I went there and I took it, they looked it over right in front of me, actually. And when they saw they got it, that I got everything right, they did sort of a secondary interview. I had already interviewed with them. And the only reason why they were willing to have me go down to Michigan to take this test was... Because as far as everything else was concerned, I seemed to be saying all of the right things. But um, that's what interviews are, right? Everyone presents the, the, the best version of themselves, whether that version is true or not. So they needed to find some way to add to, 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 to find the truth in what I was saying. So that was their way of doing it. And after I got 100% on that test, the all, all that was left after that was just sort of a handshake. I am smiling here. I love it. I think this is... There's- so much power in the story here. And what I love is how you prepared yourself for this here, because a lot of times we hear, if only I had a chance. And the way that the chance seems to try and play itself out is get me into a role first. And after you get me into the role, then I'll do the things that are necessary to learn more about the industry. Then I'll do the things that are necessary to learn more about the role. And then I can show you that like I could do it all along. And what I'm hearing from you is that you actually front-loaded that type of work. You got to know that industry really well and what the current challenges were and what the current places were. And oh, I'm seeing how like your, your love of games is probably, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully became another game for you where you're like, well, how do I win this one here? Um, Devon, do you mind me asking how you got that interview in the first place? So um, I think, I think that'd be an interesting place to, to play where, okay, if they were looking at your resume, it said that you attended, but you didn't graduate, like help us understand how that interview even came about or how they, yeah, how you first got in contact with them. I casted an incredibly wide net, an incredibly wide net. I was applying to every company on the face of the earth, basically, is, is, is what it felt like. And um, then internally, once I started working there, I, I saw that they had an incredibly glaring, glaring and immediate need. So uh, to be completely honest, there was a little bit of luck involved. If someone needs you enough, they'll, 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 talk, to, they'll talk to anyone um, and, hope, and through talking to people, they'll try to find the right person from there. So I casted a wide net. They were also casting a wide net. I mean, then we just sort of found each other. But I mean, the first thing, the first thing that I had to do was was cast a wide net. I couldn't be restricted to places that were near me. I lived, I you know, I lived and grew up in New York. Um, the job market in New York is incredibly competitive. The job market in Detroit, Michigan, not as competitive. So it 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 was a less ideal place for me to to move, to relocate, to live and work. But sometimes it is what it is. And ultimately, my goal was never to work in insurance. That's why I stopped working to become an actuary. But my goal was to, or and still is, to find work in sports statistics. But in order to do that, I need to build up credentials that allow my lack of a degree to fall by the wayside or at least find work that will help me pay for completing my degree so that I can use that moving forward. Either route is fine. I just need to choose or I I just need to pursue one and actually succeed at it. And this was one step in that direction was building up the credentials and also making money because I needed it. Since you opened the door, we're going to get to what you're doing right now in just a little bit. But since you opened the door, I love to explore this with uh, enjoyment in general here. Tell me more about um, your goal here, your your end goal in mind. Like, tell us more about that. Tell us um, 
what it represents to you and, and why you're why you're interested in. Sure, I'm incredibly passionate about about well sports and games, like I mentioned earlier, but more very specifically sports because there's sports is so much more interesting. Board games, card games, those sorts of video games, those are solvable, right? These are these are programmed. These are these are structured in a confined set of rules that are unalterable and computer algorithms eventually solve them all. That's much less interesting to me than sports because there's this human element that is yet to be perfectly perfectly modeled. And in many sports, for me, uh, my primary focus is baseball um, as it pertains to breaking into sports statistics, though I love them all, is there's there. There's, there's always development in the modeling of sports events and modeling of player performances, team performances in an individual game, in an individual event over the course of an entire season, over the course of a career. And I'm a big believer that every, everything in life is able to be modeled, even though that seems like a very romantic concept in the field of statistics that everything in life can be modeled because yes, we're obviously humans and humans are allegedly unpredictable, but I'm, I'm always willing to make the claim that humans are predictable. We're just not smart enough to predict what they do. So it's, it, it's, it, it's a passion of mine to, to find ways to, to, effectively predict outcomes and effectively find the best path to success within this realm of competing against someone else who's trying to do the same thing and who's and who's an agent who's acting against your success that resistance that doesn't exist in all in, in, in all things that we do in life so um, that's so that's and that's why I pursued math that's why I studied math at school was to eventually do something that I enjoy with math because I'm really good with numbers I'm really good with statistics I'm really good at math and I want to apply it to something I enjoy instead of you know being a school teacher as noble as that is that's not for me but something like that is awesome Awesome. Well, Devon, I'm going to get into your, where you are currently, but I, I think before we do that, you've told, you told us a lot about your story, um, even just getting your first role there. Um, and if there was one thing, one takeaway that you want employees to walk away with, right? If, there was, if there's something you, can, you could tell them, uh, what would it be? Well, as it pertains to that specific example, I would say that I'd say don't be afraid of failing. Don't be afraid of people saying no to you. Don't be afraid of of not getting what you want as soon as you want it. You know, I see so many times and you know, people would ask me for advice for for getting their first jobs as well. And um, I always tell them, you know, apply for apply for every job that you're willing to work at, whether you whether you feel like you're qualified for it or not. It's the same thing. If you know, I'm, 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 I'm a theater enthusiast as well. I, I, I enjoy acting and performing. And I tell people, if you want to be in this show, audition for it. Even if you don't think that you're good enough for it, audition for it. It's not up to you to decide whether or not you're good enough for it. It's a director's job. It's the, it's the hiring manager's manager's job. They'll be the ones to, 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 to let you know that you're not prepared for it in their eyes. It's not for you to decide. And if you don't put yourself out there, you'll, you're, you're, then you're definitely not going to get it. And that's, and that's a cliche, obviously, but it's a cliche for a reason. It's a cliche because it's been, it's been proven to be historically accurate. Just uh, casting a wide net is not a problem. Applying for applying for things isn't a problem. The 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 the, the ten minute commitment that it takes to apply for something is not it's it's not worth giving that up. And when if if the consequence is giving up a potential lifetime opportunity that that you that you wanted to enjoy, hey, Devon, I really appreciate you just keeping it so real here around around this like putting it all into like perspective here because employees i know a lot of you might be out there and i, I myself i feel it i'm sure devon feels it like there's that that feeling of of fear of like really putting yourself out there of rejection you know the r word um and i really love how you put it into perspective of like but is it worth it is it worth missing out on what could be possible for you by taking yourself out of the game to even all together and not even giving yourself a shot at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I, I've applied for major league baseball. It's gotta be at least 11 different times now over the course of the past four years. Yeah. And, and they've told me no every single time. Um, basically for the same premise of man i we really wish you had a degree though and as as i build up experience eventually they're, they're probably going to say yes to me at least i would hope they would yes because at, at, at some point the the degree starts to mean less absolutely devon it's actually interesting because i'm reading a book right now um actually i just finished it it's called go for no by um richard fenton and andrea waltz and as i'm hearing you say this right now like one of the major premises there is that rather than a lot of people look at life and they think of success and failure as being on two opposite sides of, let's say, a football field or a basketball court. So they have 
they're standing in the middle and success is on one side and failure is on the other. And they start get they start hearing those. They start feeling like, like they're failing at different things. And they're like, oh, I must be doing the wrong thing. Let me go back in the opposite direction and like restart this so I can head towards success. But it seems like you've really, you're living in, like you're an inspiration to me right now because this, this is something that I'm trying to like internalize from from uh from that book but they have to say that the that yes is the destination success is the destination and failure or no is the path there you know so you're like all right i've collected 11 no's on the 12th one maybe that would be when they give me the the yes but eventually i'm working in mlb um and if any of you out here i'm gonna i'm gonna even just take the society we are a community of employees we are a community of people regardless of when you happen to listen to this uh, episode because if you could hear it right now devon is determined we know that he's going to be working in this in this role at some at, at that company at some point soon if you know anyone that works at mlb please share this episode with them if you know anyone that um that uh devon can just get in, in contact with to help him uh, understand a little bit more about uh how he can be successful with it, with this long-term dream here um i'm going to just take this opportunity and ask employees for your help and for us to come together as a community to help raise each of us up there because there are so many different things that we are capable of especially when we work together devon i hope you don't mind me putting that that out there on on your behalf but uh, no, something about mind about it okay yeah, I don't mind at all. That's very nice. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you like you came and you're you, you're willing to share the things that are really important. So, why don't we go here and understand a little bit more about your lead data scientist role right now? Uh, tell us like what you do, like maybe help us understand like what the what the role actually entails, and then we'll dive into a, a bit more specifics from there. Sure. So, I work at a startup right now. Um, the name the name of the startup is Forecast Incorporated, and we started as a food ordering platform in this in a similar vein as GrubHomeDelivery.com, but we were only in Hoboken, New Jersey. And now we are pivoting and building an entirely new platform that, honestly, legally, I'm not sure how much I can say about it, so I'm just going to avoid it all. At, yep, uh, good call. Entirely. <laughs> <laughs> but um, as far as my role now, I'm lead data scientist. Um, I, yeah, I mean, essentially, I, I, I work with uh, building machine learning algorithms, creating machine learning experiments. And um, then there's also a, a segment of business analytics that, that go along with that. And by default, the, 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 the business analyst of, of the team as well. So I, I do a lot of uh, basically whenever, whenever I find anything in the data, anything that tells us anything about our users or about our market or about anything at all that will impact our, our product, I present it to the powers that be. And I tell them, this is the reality as I see it, do what you will with it. But here's my recommendation. And yeah, and that just comes with, that just comes down to crunching really just lots and lots and lots of numbers. Um, technically speaking, uh, it involves knowledge of Python, knowledge of R. Those are the two main languages that need to be known in order to work in data science and it involves the use of, of lots of softwares um, uh, that you know knowledge of javascript is also relevant as well but then as far as like database um solutions knowing um no js being able to interpret and work with json files uh, MongoDB, um, Amazon Web Services platforms, Microsoft Azure platforms, whatever you're using for machine learning or business analytics, being able to confidently use those platforms as well. I'm the guy in the company who who does and uses those sorts of things. So all of the intelligence as a pertains to the product comes from me. Booyah! <laughs> I love that. Like I love that aspect there. Uh, and what's coming to mind here there's so many places i want to explore but i think the place i think is most important to start out with is that you just listed um a number of different technical uh, aspects that you work with in technical program and programming languages and so on and so forth there um my question is how did you pick up these skills along the way and maybe even more importantly what would be your suggestion to someone who hasn't done data science this role or data science roles as specifically um but is very interested in getting involved and you know making a, a move either internally or externally into a data science role like how, from a technical standpoint here what are your thoughts on being able to progress there sure so so, so, so i'll go through this in a piecewise manner the first uh question answering how i came upon these skills um, along the way um, i'm self-taught as it pertains to everything programming and, and and technical i'm self-taught as when in school at stevens i learned math statistically and theoretically but i didn't learn any uh, sort of computer science implementation if you will of 
of, of mathematics or analytics that something that that would be taught in other majors that I did not take. It was not uh, there. Those were not any concentrations that I focused in. So I uh, became self-taught in those. Now, um, how that happened was so when I was working at Fidelis Secure Care, I didn't need to use. I didn't need to know any specific programming languages. I found out that if I became comfortable with my sequel then that would be of tremendous use for me just basically being better at my own role as it was given to me so I taught myself my sequel um, early on while working there while I was being trained on, on the side I taught myself my sequel but after that there were nothing much I was using softwares that were you know built for me there wasn't there wasn't any the, the, the data sets were not complex enough for me to work with that that were required me to do anything more special than excel really to be completely honest but there came a time when fidelis secure care be, uh, was bought out by another company and when they were bought out by that company that company already had their own analytics firm they didn't need me anymore so i was let go through that uh, the problem with that was that i was working at fidelis secure care for maybe nine nine months at that point. It wasn't that long of a time in the grand scheme of things. So I was let go. I moved back to New York. It wound up being the same problem of, well, I have nine months of work experience here, but that's not so, it, it, it's not very impressive on a resume, at least not enough to make up for the fact that I still don't have this degree. So looking for a job was very, very difficult. At one point, I contemplated actually going into the military um, for a while to pay for school so that I can um, get the degree and then go and do the things that I wanted to do. Um, but while I was mulling over all these options, I was working at a restaurant. And while working at this restaurant um, in Hoboken, New Jersey, um, along the side, I was teaching myself Python. I, I was comfortable with R because R is used in math, or at least was taught to me in the math courses that I took. Um, but I didn't, I, I wouldn't say that I had a working proficiency in R either. So I was brushing up and learning R as well um, on the side while I was working at this restaurant. Just thinking about maybe the different roles that I can have in the military or things that I would need in order to um, continue working in in data to work at you know Major League Baseball or for a baseball team or what have you. So um, I was teaching myself. I worked at this restaurant for also about nine months or so until a representative from Forecast came in to sign up the restaurant um, to to be on the Forecast platform and. At this time now, I'm the general manager of the restaurant and the owner basically entrusted me with vetting forecast to see if it was a, a worthwhile business relationship. And through talking with forecast, they, uh, or at least their sales represent, their sales representative, um, this sales representative happened to be the head of sales for forecast. And he recognized that I was asking a lot of questions that he didn't expect from your run of the mill restaurant employee. So he asked me about my background. I told him, and then he encouraged me to go in and talk to their engineering team. And um, I, through talking to their engineering team, they then vetted my ability at using Python, at using R, at using, um, and then my ability to learn um, on the fly. And they trusted me. And I suppose I did well enough because now I'm the lead data scientist. But um, that's that. That was essentially my journey to the job. So um, that answers the how I came upon those skills. Now, as far as uh, advice to other people looking to break into data science, I mean, the 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 advice is sort of laced in there. Acquire those skills. It's not, um, those skills aren't particularly difficult to acquire. Uh, if, if you have a penchant for programming at all, learning a new programming language isn't that hard. So, um, but you have to have a penchant for programming first. So I, I, I wouldn't suggest breaking into data science if you're, if you're, if you're not a fan of, of writing lines of code, um, and, and, exe and executing and writing algorithms. Um, so that's the first thing is learn is learn the softwares, learn the languages, or rather learn what you need, which I mean I already said, and uh, and pursue those. As far as uh, finding an actual job with it after having those skills, the biggest thing is to always in any interview specifically don't don't say that you don't know something. Always tell the truth. That's a very important tenet that I have just in life. Always tell the truth. But uh, saying that you don't know, though it's truthful, is not useful. If if you're asked a if you're asked a question um, pertaining to some programming problem that an interviewer were to present to you, for me it was um, I was asked to um, to program an 
iPod Shuffle to 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 write some code that just basic code to program the iPod Shuffle. And um, though that may be um, relatively simple in concept when you're thinking about it, there is actually a lot of a lot of um, common pit uh, common potholes that people fall into when they are um, writing this code and theory and and conceptualizing what an iPod Shuffle looks like on the back end. And whenever you come across those, I mean, an interviewer should be somewhat guiding you through this because you are doing this on your on your feet and that's not what the job actually looks like um, but when he's asking you uh, conceptual questions regarding this don't say you don't know um, create a base of assumptions operate within those assumptions and then answer the question right if 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 if, the, if he asks you for instance how um how how, 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 how many apples can you hold in your hand can you hold in your arms and you could say well i don't I don't know. It depends on how much the apples weigh. That's not particularly useful. What you so what you actually say is, well, assuming that the apples weigh this much and I can lift this much, this is how many apples. That's a useful answer. Um, so it's really just finding um, creative ways to answer the question instead of just accepting defeat. There's always a solution to the problem. There is always a solution to the problem. Devon, this is spectacular here. Well, I'm glad you like it. I think there's something about the the base of assumptions uh, there and, and that that takeaway that you gave us there. I think being able, MJ, I'm going to encourage you to think through some places and, and let's even do this. Let's have let's play a little bit of a game for one week, MJ. Right? This is how I, I like I like to play because this is MJ, and I figure games should be fun. And Devon, you are you are here, so I'm with the game master. Let's play a bit of a game for the next week, MJ. Don't say I don't know, and instead, anytime when you feel like you don't know, practice in. In real life, at the grocery store, when you're getting coffee at Starbucks, all that, practice setting a base of assumptions and operating within those assumptions and solving the problem through those assumptions. And you can get used to building the muscle of not knowing, but figuring out what you do know and using that to your advantage. Devon, how does, like, you're, you're, you know games there. How does that sound for, to, to start building up some of that muscle there? Yeah, I mean, that's what we always have to do, right? I mean, um, any game that you play, you'll, you'll be put in some difficult situations for sure. Um, if, if, if we're going to continue using game analogies and you have to take your turn, right? You have, you have to make your turn. So even if you're not sure what the best move is, well, you have to use you have to use all the all the information you have at your disposal and figure out what the best move is given what you do know. Oh, that's awesome! And I love how like you were able to do that even in your transition year, the second job transition, which I and I love how the opportunity came. The opportunity, like you, it wasn't like you were just focusing on the again. You were doing the work in advance. It wasn't like you were like, all right, I'm at the restaurant. I'm just going to be at the restaurant and and you know at a certain point I'm going to make make the next move. You had positioned yourself once again to that when the opportunity came you were ready when the opportunity came like you surprised the person in a sense of like wait a minute you're not asking me. <laughs> you know way more about this here um and and you know a lot of times we'll talk about like you know people say you know i'm trying to get referrals i don't know anyone in, in, in the industry and it's funny because you you know you may know way more than you think but are you presenting yourself in and in, in, in who you're being not in what you're what you are describing but in who you're being that allow this to happen i'm sure devon part, part of the thing that I would say it would make you incredibly, I, I know that you will always have job security and, and, and enjoyment is the fact that you know how to learn and you can, and you, you, you believe everything is solvable. Um, and that alone is a quality that will make anyone successful. Um, and I'm, I'm seeing that I'm really glad that you're sharing with us, like how it's made you successful. Um, so what, like you've talked through some difficult times here. I'd love to talk through like your proudest professional moment. Would you mind sharing with us uh, a story that, um, you know, really that you're really proud of and, you know, the specific elements that led up to that success? Uh, sure. Um, I would say my proudest moment. So this is a, actually a bit of a departure from, from data science, but still pertaining to the work that I did. So for me, one thing that's very important to me is that anything I do, it's important that I've made someone's life better. The, the main reason why I didn't go into being an actuary was because um, I developed a fundamental disagreement or a fundamental distaste for the way that that most insurance companies operate on a on a fundamentally moral level and how and how insurance is handled in general in America and it, it felt it felt gross to me to be a part of that. Uh, so when I was working at the restaurant, actually, it was uh, some of my happiest times working because there's something special about you give someone food and they're happy. Like that's the day. That might be the happiest part of their day and they don't even realize it because if they didn't have that, their day sucks. Like that's it. 
Like they really wanted this food and they chose this restaurant because it was food that they specifically enjoyed. And you are, you were that vehicle of handing the food to them. But my proudest moment as far as work is, uh, as far as work was concerned was back when I was at Fidelis Secure Care, the first, the first job I had. And when I started working with them, they, they, they didn't have that much for me, for me to do as far as time intensity is concerned. So I was doing important work, but the work realistically just didn't take that long. I had a lot of, I had a lot of free time in my day, really. So they found another need that they had, which was that their transportation division was just severely lacking. So I was working for a Medicare Advantage company and well, they, the, this company provided transportation to all of its members free of charge through these transportation providers. Well, transportation was the biggest complaint of these patients who are, who, who are utilizing our, our health plan. And it was consistently just over the course of, 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 the, of the couple of years leading up to, leading up to uh, what I'm about to say was consistently the largest problem. So they were looking for solutions. And what happened was they, um, they asked me to go down to where to the person who was leading transportation at the time. This was, a, this was someone who, was, who had split duties doing a number of things. They were, they were spread a bit thin. And they wanted me to, uh, the, 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 the vice president of, of sales and marketing actually wanted me to go down and just collect some, some data from them. And I'm like, go down and collect data from them. They, this is something that can be emailed. I'm not, I don't, why do I have to go there physically to collect it? And I go down there and I, and I find out why the, 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 the process of, of, of keeping transportation information was actually probably the most disgusting thing I'd, I'd ever seen in my life. It was, there, it was a lot of physical papers that were scanned and put into all of their own separate folders on this computer in a way that was incredibly disorganized. There was no way to collect comprehensive statistics on anything regarding transportation because of the way that all the information was kept in store and transportation had largely fallen by the wayside as far as quality assurance was concerned. So um, I presented this to my VP of sales and marketing. I said, okay, I have, I went down there to collect the data. This is what I have and I can't work with this. And um, I, if, if you, if you really need me to, I'll, I'll put together a report regarding this. It's going to take a long time and it's probably not going to give you the information that you need, but this is the reality. And he, he told me, okay, great, do what you can. And after that, you're in charge of transportation. So then I became the data analyst slash transportation coordinator for Fidelis Secure Care. And then I was tasked with hiring people to work under me to now, or, or rather he asked me, what do I need in order to make transportation great again? Hashtag. And I told him that, well, I probably need a couple of reps under me to actually um, speak with these patients uh, verbally over the phone and be able to answer in a reasonable amount of time. So he allowed me to hire two people in order to do that. And then I set up an infrastructure to properly track transportation appointments, to properly uh, call and receive feedback, complaints, whatever the case may be, in, in order to improve transportation. And I set up a system of, of customer service representatives who were specifically dealing with transportation because there were over 100 rides every day that were, that were taking place in, De in Detroit. And about 30% of them would have some sort of issue that needed someone to speak on the phone about. So through all of this and through everything that I did, I set up a database to track everything and then automatically alert uh, the us internally, whenever something is later going wrong, and then we were able to handle everything in real time. And then transportation went from being the largest complaint of, of Fidelis Secure Care to being the smallest complaint. It was something that was virtually never actually complained about, at least not um, for things that we were able to control. So um, that was probably my, 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 my proudest moment working because then uh, if people couldn't get to their doctor's appointment, then they actually couldn't receive medical care. And that was... And that's and that's a tremendous failure of any health plan. If someone purchases, uh, if someone if someone is paying into or 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 using your health plan over other options, and then they don't they aren't able to receive their health care, then that's but that's that, that's fundamentally a horrible thing to have to deal with. So Devon, I have to be honest with you, and and also honest with them to use out here. What I have playing on through my mind is the Final Fantasy battle theme, like victory. It's like <laughs> din 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 din. din, din. <laughs> That is, that's quite the story there. And, you know, some things that were really interesting to me that I, I pulled out were really, you found a way, and even in the restaurant uh, role, 
to really find enjoyment every day. And I, I say, do the things that bring you joy each and every day. And what I don't mean by that is, you know, just be selfish and like, just do whatever makes you happy and th like disregard everything else. It's like, find moments in every single day, at least one moment a day that you are grateful for, that you, that brings you joy, that you, that you, that, that really makes you happy. And I feel like just even the way that you presented your time there in the restaurant where you realize like, Look, I'm I'm serving you food right now, or I'm or making sure that you have uh, a meal at this moment. But this might be the best part of your day. I know for me personally, there are times where I take breaks, and all I want is burger, some French fries, a Coca Cola, you know, and if it comes with it, an ice cream side. Out, why not? <laughs> right? But like, <laughs> like not to say that's my best part of the day, but like what that does to nourish me, you know, in terms of like helping me say like, all right, I'm ready for the second part of of what's coming up. It's tremendous, and I just I want to just highlight how you weren't in a role that you necessarily wanted at the time, but A, you continue to grow up through it, uh, becoming a general manager. And then also you found that joy each, like on a daily basis. And employees, I, I would ask you to look for yourself and see like where are places that you, in your role right now, wherever you're doing right now, even if you're not working at all, how can you find some one thing each day to find some joy in? One thing each day. And, and, and it's funny. It's cool to me because that same thread of being able to serve people continued on with the transportation and really like helping making sure that people were able to, uh, to, to get the healthcare that, 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 that they desired. So that's a really interesting thread there. Is there, if there, if there was a one takeaway that you wanted people to walk away with, like some golden nugget that you want from this proudest moment and the things that led up to that success, what would it be? Just. Pam, I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but whenever you're facing a hardship or a difficult situation, properly diagnose the problem and then find the best solutions to it. Don't spend don't spend time, don't waste time wallowing over the difficult situation that you're in when you can put that time towards making it better. Woo wee! Oh, I love that there. All right, so Devon, uh, why don't we go ahead and wrap things up here? We've had we've had some a lot of fun. Um, I'd love to know about what is um, currently exciting you in your role. What are some things that are coming up that, you know, uh, we should look out for or maybe we can help support you in, in the near future? Well, right now, I mean, Forecast is launching a new product and I, I can't say much about it right now, but I think it's uh, it's definitely something if you, if you, when you hear Forecast pop up in, in a casual conversation or in, in, in marketing or media that, that, that you may happen upon, probably shouldn't ignore it. That's all, that's all I'm going to say. That is awesome. So I like to end these conversations with just like one one bit of like actionable advice for, for employees. So if there's someone out there who really resonated with your story, who some part of, of this conversation really got them thinking, uh, what would be your advice for them in order to take action within the next seven Date. Oh man, something that there's something that I said that resonated with them, and they want to do something in the next seven days. How oh, man, I don't know what to say besides actually do it, right? Like if 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 you like if you wanted to get into the data science and and you're like, yeah, you know what? Maybe I should learn Python or R. Do it. Find a find a, find an online course or find find documentation that makes sense to you and, and and do it as soon as it comes up. Put it into your schedule. Put it into your into your calendar and and force yourself to actually sit down and do it and don't waste the time. Um, there's a lot of time for, for for leisure and fun. And trust me, I as someone who's who, who's an enthusiast in playing video games and watching sports, I sure do find my leisure time. But uh, if, if 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 I'm to treat life as a game and if I'm to treat these these objectives as winnable objectives, then um, re managing my time and managing my resources is incredibly important. So set aside the time to actually execute. I love it. So, Devon, like, um, I just want to thank you so much for your time here today. If, if employees wanted to stay in touch with you, uh, what's the best way that they can do that? Sure. Um, my email address is probably the best, and I don't and I don't mind at all communicating with anyone through email. I'm very accessible by email. Um, and my email would be uh, D Lineman, which is uh, D L I N E M A N, just like the football position at Outlook.com. Wonderful. Um, Devon, I'm so, so pleased that you took the time to share your story with us here today. Thank you for your expertise, for your experience, and just for, and for your energy, for your, the way that you chose to present yourself and, and come to the table. Um, you have done a lot in helping other people solve their problems, and you've also been an inspiration to me. So just thank you so much. It's clear that your success is only going to continue going forward, and not because of just levels of success overall, but because you're going to keep finding ways to be told no as you go forward and create what you want out of life. 
It's really inspiring. And I, I look forward to all of us being a part of your journey to make that a possibility. Thank you so much. No, no problem. I'm glad to hear it. I'm always happy to help as well. Sometimes it can be just that simple, employees. Devon has put out there for us in terms of our actions for this next week to just go out there and do it. Put it on our calendar, what we're going to do, and block off that time and do it. It's going to be different. What we have to work on is going to be different for each of us here. And if you don't know what you need to work on, then that's what you need to work on. And you can have a chance to explore that with us in a one-on-one coaching session or through the workshops that we're offering now over at enjoyment.com slash workshops. Or you can explore it by just coming and talking and sharing with each of us over in the Enjoyment community, which you can go and find over at Empjoyees.com or Enjoyment.com slash community. At the end of the day, we really want to be able to see you get to what you want out of life. And it's through action. It's by actually taking the time to make it come to life. If this is the episode that like got you really thinking, if this is the episode that made you say, wait a minute, I really can do this. If this is the episode where you decided to invest in yourself and say, yeah, I'm making something happen. Then come over, go over to the workshops and let's take a step forward. Go to the Enjoyment website and see what's the best way that Enjoyment can help you and support you as you take on this really important transition. It is possible to experience Enjoyment daily, but you have to first decide that it's something that you want for yourself and something that you actually deserve. And when you're ready for that, because I'll let you know right now, you do every single person out there. This is the reason why I created this podcast, because it's important for me to, that you know that you have unlimited potential. Whether or not you see it right now, I believe in you. You're listening to this because you're looking to move forward in your life and to develop in some type of way. And I'm excited to have the opportunity to support you as that goes along. I'll see you at the next workshop. And I'll see you in the community. Here's to doing the things that bring you joy each and every day. Take care, employees.